Hello, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay, so I, last class we discussed till critical pressure temperature, right? Critical volume. Yeah. Yes, so we had uh, discussed what is critical point and at critical point, what is critical pressure, critical temperature and critical volume. Okay, we have also seen almost we are done like, I think almost 10-15% left. Okay, we'll finish it today and we'll start the new chapter. Okay, could you check your notes? Have we discussed the correcting bulk problems in the states of matter? Have we seen a topic like correcting bulk problems? Okay. Right, fine. Okay, so. Yes, yes, critical point we did. Okay, write down next. So I think last class we discussed about this, uh, the critical point, just a quick uh, a recap that we did. Critical point we discussed the definition of critical point, 
and the various parameter at critical point. Okay, the formula of PC at critical point, uh, sorry, uh, for critical point is 27 by B square. VC is equals to 3B and TC is equals to what? 8A by 27, RB, correct? 8A by 27, R, B, okay? And with the help of these data, if you find out the compressibility factor, factor, so this Z is equals to, we have PC, VC by RTC, and when you solve this, the value of compressibility factor at critical point is three by eight till here we had discussed last class. Okay. Now we have one more term here that is reduced uh, equation of state. Reduce equation of state. Reduce is equation of state is defined with the you know with respect to the reduced temperature, reduced pressure, and reduced volume. So reduced temperature is represented by TR and it is mathematically defined as temperature divided by the critical temperature. This is reduced temperature. Similarly, reduced pressure is pressure divided by the critical pressure and reduced volume is volume divided by the critical volume. Okay. So with all these formula, we know pressure temperature and pressure from this what we get, we get um, three relations pressure is equals to PR into PC temperature is equals to TR into TC volume is equals to VR into VC. Okay. Now all these term, if you substitute in a van der Waals equation, which is P plus A by P plus A by V square into V minus P, I'm taking one mole is equals to RT all these pressure volume and temperature if you substitute you'll get the reduced equation of state you don't need to you know do it step by step just to copy this down the final expression pr plus 3 divided by vr square into 3 vr 3 vr minus b is equals to 8 TR. This equation is in independent of A, B. Equation is independent of A, B and R. And this equation we call it as reduce equation of state. Not important. Copy this down.
Okay, done. Uh, so this you can substitute the uh, you know the pressure and when you solve it you will get a and b cancelled left hand side and right hand side if you substitute all the values no both will get cancelled because you see tr is nothing but uh, you know t by tc sorry t is nothing but tr into tc correct TC you can write 8A by 27RB. So you have numerator A and denominator B, right? So when you solve, solve, when you substitute this A and B, and then the value of critical pressure and volume, A and B, both sides will get cancelled. Okay. Okay. Next slide down. The various type of intermolecular forces. Heading all of you write down. Intermolecular forces. Intermolecular force are mainly classified into four categories. Okay, four types of intermolecular force we have. Okay, between neutral molecules. The first one is dipole-dipole forces. dipole dipole forces okay this force write down just key points we'll see this force exists between exist between between polar neutral molecules between polar neutral molecules and in an effective when an effective when an effective when the polar molecules are very close An effective when polar molecules are very close. Correct? Because you see, suppose we have A and B polar bonds we have. Logically, you can understand, right? Polarity in molecules is because of the electronegativity difference. B is more electronegative, so delta negative, and this one is delta positive. You see, so we have a charge center, right, at a certain distance. So this is behaving as plus and minus that is a dipole it is right so dipole dipole force is what if you have two polar molecules like this with opposite charge close to each other then there will be a force of interaction that is the dipole dipole forces right so both should be polar in nature okay Write down this force increases with this force increases with the molecular size, the molecular weight, and dipole moment. Increases with the molecular size, the molecular weight and dipole moment applied only for gases okay 
okay the second type of intermolecular force we have dipole induced dipole forces dipole induced dipole forces okay it exists between exists between polar and non polar molecule polar and non polar molecule okay so what happens here suppose we have a polar molecule right so obviously in polar molecule we have charge separation and we have a non polar molecule right so in polar molecule we already have charge separation so it is plus and it is minus and when these two comes closer this plus charge will attract the electron towards this side and because of the effect of this attraction here we have delta negative and here it becomes delta positive charge so this kind of charge that develops because of the interaction with this polar molecule in this non polar molecule we call it as induced dipole because it is behaving as a dipole once it comes closer to the another molecule which is polar in nature right so this one is a dipole and the second one is induced dipole so it is dipole induced dipole forces between polar and non polar molecule okay third one oh, sorry few points in this you write down it is weaker than it is weaker than dipole dipole forces weaker than dipole dipole forces and and it is also called and it is also called d by forces i'll write down here and it is also called d by forces d e b y e d by forces okay it increases with write down it increases with the first one obviously with dipole moment more dipole moment more will be the interaction and more will be the induced dipole okay the second one is polarizability of non polar molecule polarizability of non polar molecule okay these two factors we have for this third type of intermolecular forces we have that is london dispersion force london dispersion force it 
exist between between two non polar molecule between two non polar molecule and it is due to due to the random motion of motion of electrons within an atom an atom or molecule Okay. Next write down. Okay. Next write down. Due to the motion of electron, due to the motion of electron, the motion of electron. an instantaneous dipole creates due to the motion of electron okay due to the motion of electron an instantaneous dipole creates which creates the, which influences the i'm repeating due to the motion of electron in an atom an instantaneous dipole creates which affects the motion of electron in another atom or molecule okay so what happens here suppose we have two atoms mainly it is for noble gases suppose we have sorry wait okay so we have suppose helium atom present like this and we have another helium atom like this present right so there are two electrons so these two electrons are randomly moving in these two atoms correct so the, the moment suppose you assume for a fraction of seconds the two electron the position of two electrons are here and in this atom the position of two electrons are exactly on the opposite side for any instance this kind of arrangement if it is there then this side is slightly negative this side slightly positive similarly here we have slightly negative and this side we have slightly positive so for this instant it experience a force of attraction here and this force of attraction is nothing but the london dispersion force so very weak force in fact all molecular forces are very weak but this one is the uh, is even weaker than the other forces london dispersion forces right so it is because of the movement of electron in an atom or molecule 
okay this lumber london dis dispersion force increases with write down it increases with increase in in number of electron number of electron molecular size molecular size polarizability polarizability and since we have molecular size so we can also say molecular weight then okay so these are the three types of intermolecular forces we have the fourth type we have that is hydrogen bonding and we had already discussed it so this we are not going to do it again okay so we had discussed this two types of hydrogen bonding we have intermolecular and intramolecular hydrogen bonding had already discussed it okay so i'm just leaving this thing so these three types of intermolecular force we have four types of intermolecular force we have within the molecule okay uh, this this thing is not that important you probably you know sometimes you'll get some theoretical questions on this okay but overall it is not that important okay now the two more concepts we have to discuss in this chapter the last two concepts we have to discuss is the connecting bulb problems you won't get these questions mainly in school it is mainly for the competitive exams okay so write down next connecting bulb problems okay bulb in the sense we are having here vessels right this two vessels when they are connected okay so if i uh, right suppose we have two vessel contains gases into it right contains gases into it and these two vessels are connected by a tube right connected by a tube and there's a stop cork here right it is a stop cork so purpose of this is it prevents the mixing of the gases in the two vessel right that is why we use it right stop cork prevents the the mixing of gases okay when you open it then the gases may mix right so obviously we have certain pressure here p1 v1 t1 and p2 v2 t2 right so when you open this the gases will flow from this uh, column or the this column to this column means there will be mixing of gases okay when you open the stop cork why this mixing happens because there is some pressure difference and mixing happens till the pressure becomes equal in both bulb or both container right the gases diffuses from high pressure to low pressure mix properly when the pressure becomes equal then there is no further mixing right so here two types of questions arises once when the temperature equals in both the bulb t1 is equals to t2 and another type is when the temperature is not equal in the both bulb 
T1 is equals to T2. Okay, these two cases we are going to discuss that in both cases, what will do. Okay, so case one, all of you write down. Case one, when there is same temperature in both the bulb. both the bulb, okay? This two container we have. And this two container, like I said, connected with a tube and a stop cork is there. Right, and a stop cork is there. What I'm assuming, I'm assuming the tube has negligible volume. The connecting tube has negligible volume. Okay. Now the data which is given over here is we have 20 gram of H2 present in this vessel. 20 gram of H2. Volume is 10 liter. And temperature is 300 Kelvin. Given. Right? This is suppose bulb A. This is suppose bulb B. And in the bulb B, we have 160 gram of O2. Okay. We have volume 15 liter. And we have temperature that is 300 Kelvin. So temperature is same in both the bulb. Correct. Could you find out, this is the data given, we need to find out, calculate the question is, calculate the pressure in both the bulb, in both the bulb, when a stop cork is closed, when stop cork is closed, when first question, stop cork is closed. And the second question, when a stop cork is open, are you getting the question? Did you understand the question guys? All of you respond. So this is the two question we have. Now, obviously, when the okay, obviously, when the pressure when the stop cork is closed, then we can find out the uh, pressure easily by applying PV is equals to nRT. So pressure in A, if you find out that is PA into the volume V is equals to NART, ideal gas equation. So PA is equals to VA will have here and A R T A by VA. So number of moles we know 20 gram of H2 we have 
so 20 divided by 2 into r value will take uh, 1 by 12 i am assuming here 1 by 12 r okay because r value is 0 0.082 or 0 0.08 is approximately you can assume 0. Suppose if I take this 0 0.0, are you getting noise? It is 8 by 100, I am assuming which is approximately we can write 1 by 12. Okay, this approximation sometimes helps you a lot in solving questions, right? So here I'm taking 1 by 12, especially in this kind of question, you must remember this. TA is 300 given and volume is given in the question that is 10 liter. Now, when you solve this, you will get 12 into 2, 24, 24, uh, 2 and 2 will get cancelled, 30 by 20, 300 by 20. So we are getting 25 atmospheric. Okay, it is 25 atmospheric, the pressure in the first bulb we have. Five times it is twenty five three. We are getting twenty five by three, that is twenty five by three atmospheric pressure. We are getting so obviously what we are getting here. You see, we are getting the pressure of bulb A is more than to that of B. is more than to that of B, okay? It means what? Once you open the stop cork, right? Once you open the stop cork, then the gas from the bulb A starts diffusing into the bulb B because the pressure here is more. And this will diffuse till the pressure becomes equal in both the container, okay? So when this you open, then the total volume would be what? The volume of A plus the volume of B. That is the total volume once you open the stop cork. Right. This tube has no volume because we are assuming tube has negligible volume. If the volume of tube is given in the question, then the total volume once you open the stop cork would be the volume of this vessel plus the volume of this tube plus the volume of this vessel. Okay. Since here the volume is negligible, then the total volume would be VA plus VB. Okay. So in this one, you see the second part of this question. I'll go to the next page. To find out the second part, we have total pressure that is PF. We need to find out the total number of moles equals to we have nf the total number of moles equals to the number of moles of a plus the number of moles of b number of moles of a is 10 moles of hydrogen and 5 moles of oxygen we have we have 15 moles present here the total volume vf is equals to va plus vb 
and that would be equals to 10 plus 15, 25 liter volume we have. Okay, volume we have. So when the stop cork is open, when the stop cork is open, right, then what we can write? PF, VF is equals to NF, RT, T is 300 only, right? So this, uh, you know, pressure PF is equals to NF is 25, sorry, 15. NF is 15. R is 1 by 12. T is 300. VF is 25. Okay. So this will give you 25, 25, 25 will get cancelled. Pressure is 15 atmospheric. We are getting. Is it clear? Yeah, understood. Yeah, any doubt in this? No. You see, for this, we are assuming non-reacting gases, okay? That is, H2 and O2 are mixing, but they are not reacting, okay? They are not reacting, they are just mixing. So what happens if they react? So when H2 and O2 reacts, it forms H2O, right? Liquid, okay? If you balance this reaction, if they are reacting, okay, if the gases are reacting, are reacting, okay, balance reaction is 2H2 gives 2H2. Number of moles of H2 is given, it is 10 moles and it is 5 moles. Do we have any limiting reagent in this? No, because it's a complete reaction by with the data given. Okay, data could be anything, right? For this data, what we are getting? For this data, for the given data, it's a complete reaction. It's a complete reaction. Okay. It means there is no unreacted reactant left. There's no unreacted reactant left. Okay. That is why we say all the gaseous particle here is converting into liquid. There is no more gas present in the vessel. And hence, the final pressure would be zero because the gas is not present. Okay. If we have any unreacted reactant, we'll find out the number of moles left and that mole we'll use to find out the final pressure. Did you understand?
क्लियर नो डाउट या टेल मी गाइस करेक्ट ओके सो दिस वी कैन डू वी कैन एड दिस वॉल्यूम हियर सी हियर we are adding up this volume since the temperature is same if temperature is not same we cannot add the volume vf does not equals to va plus vb right so in that case what we'll do that you see so the case 2 we have case 2 if temperature in both bulb in both bulb are right is different Yeah, I'll just go back on just a second. then okay so what i am assuming here the question is assume all conditions are same are same but temperature in bulb b is 400 kelvin suppose it is this and obviously gases gases are non reacting here okay all these things if it is not mentioned that the gases are reacting you don't have to consider the reaction the question 1 is calculate the pressure the pressure if stop cork is closed stop cork is closed right so what we'll do here same p v is equals to nrt will use so pa is equals to n a r t a by v a and this will be 25 atmospheric because there is no change we have calculated this already pb will be 10 the number of moles of oxygen into 1 by 12 temperature is 400 divided by the volume is 15 liter and when you solve this you will get around 11.1 atmospheric this is the pressure we have here right in each bulb Okay, so when you once you open the stop cork, then the gases will mix. Right, A will go into 
the bulb B, the gas A will go into the, the bulb B, but we cannot add the volume Vf is equals to Va plus Vb. So second question is, calculate the pressure Calculate the pressure in both the bulb. In both the bulb. When the stop cork is open. Okay. So we cannot write here Vf does not equals to Va plus Vb. The reason is the temperature is different in both bulb, right? This is one thing. We know this fact that Pa is more than Pb. It means gas A is at higher pressure. So A will diffuse into bulb B. So what we are assuming that X moles of A will go into the bulb B and the pressure becomes equal, right? That is what we are assuming. Assume X moles of A mix with, mix with B, okay? So, uh, for bulb A, what we can write here? Achha, uh, one second, I'll go back. Okay, so bulb A, you see, the final pressure is P, I am assuming, which, which will be same in both the bulb. Temperature we have already, 300 Kelvin. Volume is also given, 10 liter. Right, number of moles which is left here is initially it was 10, so 10 minus x. We can apply PV is equals to NRT here, NARTA. That is equation one. And if you apply the same thing for bulb B, we have final pressure P final temperature uh, 400 Kelvin, volume of uh, B is uh, 15, I guess it is given, yeah, 15 liter. And the number of moles here, it was five initially and X moles of H2 we have here. So for this, we can again write PB, VB is equals to NBR, TB. This is 2. So if you divide 1 by this, you need to solve these two. And for solving, we are dividing 1 by 2. So PA, PB both are equal. So VA divided by VB is equals to NB is 5 plus. Achha, we have VA first, right? So it is 10 minus X divided by 5 plus X TB is, uh, TB is 400 and TA is 300. Volume is given already. You can solve this for X. Tell me the value of X that you are getting here. Yes, I'm going back one second.
Done? Yeah, find out X here. Yes, what is the value of x? You are getting 50 by 17. Okay. Should get approximately. Yes. You should get approximately for 50 by uh, 13, I guess. Could you check your answer once? Okay, wait. This we have VA is 10 by 15 is equals to 10 minus X by 5 plus X 3 by 4, right? So we'll multiply it, cross multiply. So 40 into 5, we have 200 plus 40X equals to 45 is 450 minus 45 X. Right, so we are getting here 85 X equals to 250. So X equals to, I'm getting 50 by 17, right? So 15 by 17 we are getting, right? So 15 by 17 is approximately three moles, suppose I am getting. Okay. Yeah, it's 15 by 17, approximately three moles. Now this we can substitute in any one of the formula of PV is equals to NRT, we can find out the pressure. So suppose the first one way if you apply PA is equals to VA NA R T A. We need to find out this pressure P is equals to NA is 10 minus 3 that is 7 into 1 by 12 300 volume is 10 liter here. Right? So 25 into 7 is uh, 175 by 10. That is, we are getting 17.5 atmospheric. 
this is a pressure we have in both containers. So always remember in this two type, how do we deal with this question? Okay, if temperature is constant, if temperature is not constant. Did you understand this, any doubt? Yeah, I'll go back. Yes, understood? Correct. So these two types of problem you must remember, important, right? Okay, the last part for this chapter we need to discuss, the pressure uh, due to liquid. Due to liquid. So here we are going to discuss the concept of barometer, how the pressure, you know, things are there in barometer. Write down, barometer is a, is a pressure measuring device barometer is the pressure measuring device Pressure, just give me a second. Yeah. Pressure measuring device, it uses mercury. uses mercury for the measurement of pressure like we use mercury in barometer column for the measurement of pressure okay you see in liquid what happens, suppose you have a container and in this container, the liquid is present, right? For liquids at the same level, the pressure would be same. Okay, suppose here, if you assume the, if you find out the pressure since it is open, so at the surface, the pressure is nothing but the atmospheric pressure, right? Here, the pressure is P atm at the surface. Okay. Here in the bulk of the liquid, if you see, the pressure would be different from the pressure at the surface, right? 
but the pressure at this point and and the same level at this point at at this point would be same so the same level and the same height the pressure due to liquid is same okay that won't change okay so how do we find a we know right on this point we know liquid exerts pressure liquid exerts pressure pressure because of its height okay one second <clears throat> 